I'm Jason Eppers, and this is RV Miles, and it's time for the latest in RV and camping news. Boy, is there a lot of turmoil in the RV industry at the moment. We all know that money is the biggest issue in relationships, and when money is tight, people get divorced. Well, there are certainly money issues happening in Elkhart right now, with the industry near the bottom of production. On last week's video, I shared that the RV industry recovery may have just begun, and I stand by that, even though a few of you said I was delusional. But the point is that for a recovery to have begun, we have to be at or near the bottom. RV production has turned slightly upward in the last couple of months from the lowest of lows for a very long time. That doesn't mean times aren't still hard for the RV industry, and there's so much going on. First off, there may be some brands going away, some taking a break to retool, some moving into different divisions. Our buddy Josh Winters, Josh the RV nerd over at Bish's RV, does a similar industry news thing as we do here each month. And his February video shares some inside info about certain brands that might be going away and some that are definitely being reorganized. None of it's really that big of a deal, and certainly it's less of a sea change than a lot of people expected at least for now, but you should check that video out. I'll link to it in the description. A lot of changes at Heartland, for instance, their big country and landmark lines may be gone. Forest River may be getting rid of the Cardinal Red line and the Wildcat 1 line or consolidating them. Watch that video for all the details, but I want to add to it that I think there's a heck of a lot of tension going on and a lot of employee turnover at management levels. There are good people at some companies that don't feel like they're being listened to or that are being asked to do things with the brand that they don't support. And those folks are being snapped up by other companies. There are long-term executives taking this opportunity to bow out and retire. And a lot of those staffing issues are a big part of what's driving some of this brand consolidation. It's not just that a certain line isn't selling as well as another, it's often that there's not the right people to oversee it in place at the moment. So the thing that always happens in a time like this is that some brands get worse and some get better. And some just keep doing what they've been doing and never played this game in the first place. I can't give you really definitive specifics on who and what and a lot of that stuff because a lot of things are hearsay and a lot of things are sort of fluid and ephemeral. But understand that there is just this big tension happening right now. And a lot of that is between manufacturers and their management, but also between manufacturers and dealers. There's another video that you should check out from HBRV Lifestyle. Basically half of this video is going to be about other videos you should check out, by the way. He's a dealer that explains how the dealers are really expecting the manufacturers to participate in the losses that they're taking on 2023 units. And manufacturers are saying, no way. If you don't know RV dealers, buy RVs from manufacturers on a loan and then sell them to you. So a lot of the 2023 units that were built at the height of this RV boom were bought at inflated invoice prices. And a lot of them are sitting on dealer lots and can't be sold for a profit. Dealers are taking a loss on a lot of these, and a few manufacturers are trying to at least give a handout to some dealers, but others are absolutely not. And frankly, I can kind of see both sides of this. Remember when the RV boom hit, there was quite a period when dealers were commanding full MSRP for units which is unheard of in this industry. And manufacturers weren't really reaping the rewards from that that the dealers were. But suffice it to say that there is tension all around. But guess what? That tension is mostly good for customers. Josh also mentioned in his video about the sort of mixed news coming out of a lot of the RV shows out there as show season is in full swing. FYI, Abby and I will be at the Seattle RV show February 15th to the 18th, giving free seminars on RV buying and ownership, and we'd love to see you there. Josh mentioned that Bish's dealers are doing pretty well at shows along with higher end brands like Alliance and Brinkley. I definitely have been hearing and seeing the same thing I'm wondering if some of these decontented RVs, and yes, I hate that word too, but RVs that have fewer features sold as access or essential series, maybe they just aren't doing so well at some of the hot shows where the buyer is perhaps a bit more seasoned, especially like the big Florida RV Super Show in Tampa. Also, I've been noticing at the shows that I've been to that these new lines are crowding out the ability to show some of the others. The inventory of units feels small when you look at 
all the single brands at a show, even if the full show has the same number of rigs as it usually does, some of the individual brands are less. We talk about all this consolidation may be happening in brands and brands going away, but remember we've added a lot of lines to a lot of brands out there with these access and essentials only and basics versions. But Josh told me that what he's seeing on his end from a dealer's perspective, what people are buying is confidence and peace of mind. We've all heard so much about quality issues in the RV industry, and people want to know that they're buying from a manufacturer that's less likely to produce a lemon and more likely to stand behind any problems that might arise. It's like I keep telling manufacturers, your buyer is smarter than you think. They know a lot about the unit they're looking at, perhaps even more than their salesperson. I saw a perfect example of the difference between dealers and brands that know that and those that treat buyers like idiots at the Florida RV Super Show. I happened to overhear a dealer meeting before the show opened at one of the more trustworthy brands displays. The message was clear. Do not lie to the customer. They are smarter than you. If you get caught in a lie, you will lose the sale. That was really refreshing to hear. More in a moment, but first, this video is sponsored by the folks at Wholesale Warranties. Don't pay for RV repairs in 2024 with Wholesale Warranties. It's no secret that most things are more expensive than they used to be, and RV repairs are no exception. Don't let unexpected RV repair bills sideline your RV plans this year. Protect your travel budget with reliable coverage from Wholesale Warranties and enjoy coverage of the most common mechanical failures from leveling systems to slide outs to heating and cooling systems, appliances like your fridge and all the way to your engine and more. Coverage with Wholesale Warranty starts on your schedule with no waiting period. Take your RV to any licensed repair facility in the U.S. and Canada, including mobile repair technicians. I can't tell you how huge that is. Visit WholesaleWarranties.com to get your free personalized RV warranty quote today and let them pick up the next repair bill. Thanks a lot to Wholesale Warranties for supporting this video and to you for supporting our sponsors. Another video that many of y'all have sent me to check out is from Lato's Law. Steve Lato is an attorney that I'm a big fan of. He does a lot of videos reviewing cases, some of which end up being automotive or RV related. One of his latest videos is entitled, Here is Why You Must Be Insane to Buy an RV These Days. And it details a case where a man bought a Thor motor home from Camping World in Virginia in December of 2022 and had it for all of two weeks before needing to take it in for major repairs. There was a roof leak and more, but the main issue was actually an engine failure. So the guy still doesn't have his RV back over a year later, and he's suing Camping World, Thor, and FCA, Fiat Chrysler Automobiles, which is now a part of Stellantis. The RV was built on a chassis produced by FCA. The video is primarily about the rights you waive in a purchase agreement when you buy an RV, at least at some of the big dealership chains and with certain manufacturers. The language in the Camping World Agreement waives your right to sue them for any reason that has to do with the warranty or condition of the vehicle. And the warranty notification form that you fill out for Thor says that the jurisdiction for any legal issues that arise will be in the state of Indiana where the vehicle is manufactured. So currently what is happening is that Camping World is going to get out of this lawsuit entirely, while Thor is going to win a change of venue from Virginia to Indiana because the customer signed paperwork that says they agreed to all that. So I want to do a broader video discussing some of the problems and pitfalls that come with an RV buying process. And this is a big one that gets a lot of people. Most RV sales aren't covered by lemon laws. And usually the dealer is not going to buy the RV back if you have immediate issues. In fact, you usually waive your right to that. That's just the way this industry works. I don't like it, but it is what it is. And it's not just camping world. It's most dealerships out there. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that the dealers aren't direct franchisees of the manufacturer, like when you buy a car. I take a lot of snipes at Camping World on this channel. I'm not a fan of a lot of stuff that they do, but not knowing much more about how they handled this, I have a hard time finding them at fault here, at least for not wanting to get sued for the condition of the RV. I can blame them for the long repair times, which seem to be a part of this. But for better or worse, when you buy a new RV, it is on the manufacturer to stand behind the unit that they make and not pass the buck onto the dealer. If an engine dies on a motorhome within days of ownership, Thor should be buying that unit back from the customer, hands down. They can work with a chassis manufacturer to get it fixed on their own time and dime. There are a lot of manufacturers of components at play in an RV, which is why this is all more complicated than a typical car purchase. It's components that come from all over the place. 
but the major manufacturers need to stop passing the buck to the component manufacturers. They need to just buy these back or take care of the problem right away. Case in point, more videos to point you to. When this video is over, go to the YouTube search and type in Grand Design Frame Flex. I've been keeping a close eye on this issue and it's always hard to quantify these things because some brands sell better than others and some experiences are isolated. But a lot of you have sent me a lot of concerns about this and now I've been able to talk to some dealers about the issue. Grand Design has a problem. Of course, again, another supplier. Most RV frames are built by Lippert but it's a partnership where the manufacturers tell Lippert what they want and Lippert engineers and builds it. But the manufacturer then installs everything on top of that and engineers the structure of the RV. Somebody has to take charge. And I'm not saying that Grand Design isn't standing behind this. I do know I have spoke to a few people who are very happy with how Grand Design handled the issue. Essentially frame flex, it's, it's misnamed. And you can check out another great video from the Big Truck Big RV channel. JD does a good job of explaining what frame flex is. Essentially, we're talking about frame failure. We're, we're not actually talking about flex. Frames are supposed to flex. We're talking about when it actually fails. The metal's fatigued, the welds break, the, the fiberglass gets cracked, all that sort of stuff. In many cases, frame flex issues have to do with how the unit is built onto the frame and they're not necessarily an issue with the frame itself. But should it really matter to the customer? Just like the Camping World Thor situation, so many customers have to play this game between their dealership, Grand Design, and Lippert to get this figured out. Of course, lots of other fifth wheel brands have issues with the frame flex thing too. We've just been hearing a lot of it from Grand Design. It's clear though, from the dealers that I've talked to, that Grand Design is really having a bigger problem than, than some others out there. It's definitely something that can happen in lots of other brands and it's something that can be user caused as well. But enough RV industry stuff, let's talk about some other camping news. KOA campgrounds have introduced a new AI powered chatbot at KOA.com, allowing guests to engage in real time conversations, receive instant responses to inquiries and enjoy a streamlined trip planning process according to a press release. Users can interact with the chatbot to get quick, accurate responses to their queries from KOA rewards to tips on outdoor cooking. Unlike just plugging in ChatGPT into the website though, the KOA chatbot is programmed with extensive KOA content, including all their blogs, their facts, their recipes, campground details, and more, ensuring that there's gonna be a more comprehensive and relevant response from the chatbot. I appreciate KOA's desire to jump headfirst into technology, but I gotta say, there's still no replacement for a human, even if it's just a, a web chat, which I actually, that's how I prefer to interact with companies. I don't know about you. Let me know in the comments how you like to interact with companies. But if a, if a company has on their website a, a chat portal where I can talk to a human right there, even if there's like a few steps before I get a real human, that's way better for me than calling the company or waiting for an email response. But the proof is in the pudding. I mean, maybe great, maybe not. Let me know what you think the next time you use it. If you're booking a KOA campsite, go ahead and try it out and, and let me know how it goes. A bill was defeated in the South Dakota state legislature that was supposed to restrict the expansion of state-run campgrounds. You might ask, why would anyone want to do that? Well, there's a long history in South Dakota of commercial campgrounds not wanting competition from state parks. Seems a bit silly to me because you won't find too many people who are anti-state park out there. But South Dakota even has a law that requires state parks don't undercut commercial campgrounds on price. Anyway, that bill was defeated. It would have amended state law to prevent new state campgrounds or additional state camping sites from being built without the approval of legislators. Currently, the South Dakota Game, Fish, and Parks Department can make those decisions on their own. It's absolutely crazy to me that during this big camping boom, commercial campgrounds are whining about competition from state parks, but that's absolutely what's going on here. The bill was brought on behalf of campground owners, according to the legislator that proposed it. Commercial campgrounds do a lot of government lobbying, if you don't know, from like anti-overnight parking laws at places like Walmart and other big box stores uh, on down the line. Campground industry does a lot of lobbying it's not all good for consumers. Starlink's newest standard consumer dish, V4 or Gen 3, whatever you want to call it, they're both the same thing, the one without a motor. SpaceX's newest Starlink dish is now the only base model available to subscribers 
on the company's official website. You can still get the high performance models, but it looks like the motorized dish called Standard Actuated, it's the one that most people have out there, has been retired. There was no official announcement, but a support page notes that, quote, Starlink Standard Actuated is no longer available as an option for purchase in the Starlink shop or for customers in the United States. Replacements for Standard Actuated kits will continue to be supported at this time. The new dish is a bit faster than the old one and more portable because it folds flat, even though it is actually wider on top. But it also uses more power and you have to use the app to find the right angle to point it at the sky instead of it doing itself. In reality, that's not such a big deal. Actually, it might even be faster than the motorized version to set up because you just kind of do it quickly. The aim really isn't that important to the service in the first place. The additional power is going to be the thing that is a bigger deal for some RVers. Finally, the Super Bowl is just around the corner and Fox 5 out of Las Vegas is reporting a surge in RV reservations and higher campground prices in the Las Vegas area, saying that hotel room rates are spiking, which means some fans are opting for more cost-effective options like driving their RVs into town and parking them at local RV parks. Fox 5 called several of those parks and was told that they're either fully booked for Super Bowl weekend or close to it. People, of course, waited until the last minute to book for the Super Bowl because they wanted to see if their team made it in. That's it for this week's RV and Camping News Roundup. Thanks so much for being here. Please consider becoming a Mile Marker member if you'd like to support what we do here. You can find all the details out over at RVMiles.com in the upper right-hand corner or down in the description of this video. You get extra podcast episodes. You get a subscription to RV Today magazine and more. Thanks a lot, everybody. We'll see you next time.